guys, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. I'm Astrath, and I welcome you to this. Welcome, folks, to the Guild of Dungeoneering, a game made by Gambrinus and Versus Evil. This is a uh, dungeon delving card-based roguelike, and a very good one, may I add. Um, so in this Let's Play, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going through the basic mode, uh, plus the two DLC add-ons you can see here, Pirate's Cove and Ice Cream Headaches. But to kick things off, let's start a new game. Yeah, I got a lot of save files. This is the save file that I did a test recording on, and it was going very well. Um, but then something messed up with Hypercam, and it stopped. So let's uh, overwrite that save file, shall we? And start from the beginning of the guild. This is the guild of Dungeoneering. All across the land, they're cheering. Oh, to be a Dungeoneer. Chasing fame and glory. Thank you, Mr. Bard. Yes, the Bard will be here with us throughout the entire LP. Anyway, the plot. The Ivory League of Explorers. The noblest, most virtuous guild in the land. Pfft, those insufferable jerks. I'll show them. They won't think of me so grossly incompetent when I have my own guild. I bought a small hall in the bad part of town with the gold I borrowed borrowed from them. I staked out a dungeon that's ripe for the picking. I even found a chump who can do all the dirty work while I sit back and let the, and watch the coins roll in. Like my father always told me, there's always someone stupider than yourself. Well, he never really said that to me. Actually, he said it to everyone but me. Hey, wait a minute. And that is our plot. So, here is our guild. It looks fairly bad. Welcome to your guild. Thank you. We need to hire some dungeoneers. Let's build a barracks. Indeed, let us build a barracks. The one that's always left behind. The solitary, the, the pawn who's fodder for the grind. The sorry little chump. So here is our first class in the game, the Chump. Arguably the worst character in the game. Let me just check it actually. Is that an L? Perchance? I can't find out. Fine. Uh, this person is called, I'm just going to say that's an L. Yeah. Um, Oselda? Oselda! Oselda is our first character. She's. A, I'm guessing it's a she, even though she has a mohawk. It's a Chump! Chumps are not very good. You can expand your guild to gain new dungeoners, dungeoners and abilities. First, try going on an adventure. Let's go on adventure. Okay, so the first uh, area we can do here is a little signpost saying new. That means we can go there. Rats. How original. Oh, how original indeed. It reminds me of Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. Uh, quest one is squeak squeak. Everyone's got to start somewhere. Indeed we do. So let's send a Zelda to uh, probably her doom, but we'll find out. Blue Engineer a treasure, indeed. So, I'll play your first turn. It's easy. Great. He's laying down maps and the dreaded rubber ducky. Oh no. And some money. Is that gold coin? It is gold coin. So, here is how the game works. 
So, uh, once you go up against an enemy, the enemies are the red cards. Uh, the blue cards are tiles that you can uh, craft uh, like a path. And the yellow cards are loot, like coins, diamonds, and chests. So, this is a rubber ducky. This is the easiest enemy in the game. It's a level zero, the only level zero enemy. Um, the other three levels are level one, two, and three, each with increased difficulty. So, the rubber ducky has four health, or Zelda has five health, and pretty much this is the card-based combat, where we pick up a one card per turn, and we have to use a card to block or deal damage to, uh, this ducky here. Or extra stuff from, for later on. Anyway, Miles Joff, what the, what the current cards we've got do, and what this does. This is Anger. Uh, first off, this eight point star here, um, is an attack. Now, since it is red, it is a physical attack. If it was blue, it would be a magical attack. Um, the heart, the minus heart, means that the rubber ducky will take one damage, regardless of the attack. Most irritable cards, which is what this is, this is irritable one, um, will have an anger, will have a, uh, a, a damage, like you'll take damage pretty much using him. Irritable's not the best ability. Anyway, here are our basic chump cards. We start out with three, unless we have a trait or a battle scar. Or a fountain or something like that, which allows us to have more at the start of our turn. But usually you start off with three. As you can see, we have two cower cards. Blocks one damage. Now, this is a shield. Um, since the shield is half red and half blue, it will block one damage. If it was a red shield, it would be able to block only one physical damage. Allowing magic damage to still go through. And vice versa, if it was a blue shield, it would block one magic damage. But physical damage would still go through. And we have Eyes Closed Punch, which is a one physical damage card. Since we can block with Cower, I'm going to block with Cower. So it deals one heart of damage. This is a Stupidity card, Stupidity 1, and it pretty you scratch your head. You pretty much miss a turn. So we're just going to punch him. Ooh, Headbutt. I think we're fine anyway. So that's a Headbutt, it's an Irritable 2. Deals two physical damage, deals one damage to you. I'm going to say recoil damage just because it's what I'm used to. Um, we would live that on three health. So I'm going to use Ice Close Punch. So he'll deal one damage to himself and then one for me. And Oselda wins. Right, so now we get loot. And here is the loot that we've got so far. We have a head, which is a pigeon nest. Growth one, which gives us re the rekindle card, which is growth one. Um, each, uh, each card gives you your own sort of like abilities and stuff. So this is Growth 1, which gives us Rekindle. Uh, the Wooden Stool is Stupidity 1, Crush 1, and Armor 1. Uh, the Stupidity 1 obviously gives you a Stupidity card, which we don't want. Uh, but the other two cards are really good. Crush 1 gives us Bash, which is Deal 1 Physical Damage, Block 1 Physical Damage. And Repel, which is Armor 1, which repels 3 Physical Damage. And it blocks 3 Physical Damage, which is great. And that's the Barrel, which gives us 1 Health. Uh, but does give us a stupidity card. I'm going to take the Pigeon Nest, I think. Because Rekindle, I didn't go through what Rekindle did, but pretty much it deals one magic damage and there was a heart there. But the difference is the heart didn't have a minus symbol next to it, so we actually gain a heart for using it. So let's go up against a giant. Yes, it's probably a better idea. So we go against a giant bat who is Spooky 3 and Feral 2, but it has the trait Loner. Which, minus one if it a dead end, so if we do this, it's a dead end, so now it only has three health. And uh, let's put one here, why not? This is a fountain. It's a really bad fountain, to the point that we're probably going to die. Alright, let's put the nasty rat there then. Oh god, not a nasty rat, indeed. We have to defeat two monsters here. The problem is, that is a fountain. That is a really bad fountain as well. Um, we'll get onto what fountains do after this battle. So this nasty rat has Bite, which is a Fell 2 card. Now this um, icon here, the sort of shield with the uh, line through it, means that this is unblockable. If I was to use Cower here, it would not work. So I'm just going to go for the attack with Ice Close Punch. Your opponent always goes first. So if you lose, 
if your health goes down to zero, and their health goes down to zero, your character is dead. If your health goes down, down to zero, your character is dead. Um, there are some cards later on which allows you, if you were to go to zero on that turn, uh, but so would your opponent, you would survive. Uh, we haven't got any of those, though. We do have Lucky Hit, which gives us two physical damage. I'm going to use Cower here, just though, to block this attack. Bite. Okay, that's fine. Now I'll use Lucky Hit to smack him in the face! Neurotoxin. Uh, this is a difficult card, actually. If successful, enemy discards a card from their hand. I'm not going to let that happen. I'm just going to block it. There we go. Right. Bite again. I'm going to use Rekindle here. Which will deal one magic damage and heal us for one health. And a claw, that's fine. I'm just going to rekindle again, just for funsies. And win! Go, Aselda! Well, we got? We got Cuppa, which is an offhand item. It gives us Fire 1, which gives us Fire Blast, a two magic damage card. Uh, we got another chance. Oh, we've already got a Pigeon Nest, so we don't need that. Uh, but we could have a Ruffled Shirt. Which gives us Swift 1, which gives us Shift. Which gives us one physical damage quick. That was what I was talking about if you had a specific card uh, that goes before your opponent. Uh, that's what it is, the little lightning bolt. That's a Swift or a, uh, a quick card. It also allows us to draw a card, so I'm actually going to take the Ruffled Shirt here. We need all the help we can get, because now we have a Fountain of Decay. Which is not good. Uh, can I lure you, possibly? I probably can't. Let's try. Oh, I can! Okay, that's good. That's very good. Alright, let's go. Oh, yeah! Indeed. Oh, yeah. So, since we got a fountain, fountains are bloody horrible. Uh, we got the decay trait. Taking plus two damage in one turn causes one extra damage. Uh, you can get good fountains, which will be highlighted in yellow. Uh, but yeah, we got the Fountain of Decay, which sucks. It only lasts for one match, though. So, after this one, if we were to go in another fight, the Decay would go. Um, okay, so this is Spook, Spooky 1, which deals one magic damage, block one physical damage. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use Rekindle just to restore my health. As you can see, thanks to the Loner trait, uh, he has one less health, so he's only on three. And in fact, we've won. We've won thanks to Lucky Hit. Two damage card, and the giant bat is dead. And we have won! I'm not sure if you understand. This used to be a piece of land. Since your guild come along, everything has gone wrong. And I dread to know now what you've planned. Ah, the loot, indeed. It's okay. It's all over now. They made it out safely. Take a deep breath. Maybe calm your nerves with a stiff drink. And let's count up all the gold from selling that sweet, sweet loot. So here are our rewards. We explored a little bit of the map and got four gold for that. Uh, we killed two mon- well, we got- we killed monsters, so that's two gold. Loot and gear sold is three gold, and the quest bonus is 50 gold, giving us 59 gold. Also, I've turned on battle scars, just to make this a bit more interesting. So, when your Dungeoneer uh, finishes a dungeon without dying, uh, they will get a battle scar. Battle scar we've got here is Hubris. Uh, convinced they cannot lose. Seeks out high level monsters. That is not a good battle scar. But what do you expect? She's a chump. But regardless, that's fine. So, as you can see here, we have 59 gold. Lovely. And um, you survived. I don't know how, but you survived. Uh, with that money, we can now expand the guild. Um, with some tier 1 items and stuff, which gives, uh, which is only 50 gold. It does get progressively higher, though. Tier 2 is 500 gold, and tier 3 is 2,000 gold. But as you get higher above the tiers, the, um, oh, they just get so much better. <laughs> they get so much better. So, we've got three specific things we can do. We can, um... Use, for example, uh, a training yard to unlock a new Dungeoneer. Um, we can get talismans and stuff uh, to give us extra abilities for like a few fights at the start of the battle. So we can take that into battle with us to give us a slight advantage. Or we can get loot, um, which unlocks uncommon items. So for example, the Curio Shop gives us that all that lovely stuff that we can now 
pretty much get that we can uh, we can get in the dungeons. I'm going to unlock a new character here, and I'm going to kick off. I'm actually going to kick off. Usually, sorry guys, I feel like my throat's getting a bit uh, croaky. Hang on a minute. Ah, right. So usually people kick off with a bruiser. The bruiser is a very good dungeoneer. But I'm going to kick off with the apprentice because it, it works more to my style of gameplay. So, apprentice, let's build you. Uh, we get the library. We'll pop it over here. There you go. A practical student who's always prudent, yet very pretentious and conscientious. Another nuisance for our amusement. I give to you an apprentice. <laughs> yes, Plum. Plum. Plum, welcome to the guild. So now we have two Dungeoneers. Stop that. I will not. Please stop clicking me. Stop that. Stop that. Cut it out. Yeah, you can click on your Dungeoneers. Let's see what let's see what the apprentice says. It seems they'll let anyone become a guild master these days. Would you mind holding off the incessant poking? I'm trying to think. Darling, what is it? Yes, indeed. So, um, and do you know what the best thing is? I actually did the run through, uh, like I did like a few parts or whatever, and by the time I got to the second, uh, what's it called? The second video, I already had another, uh, block here, which I don't want yet. Like, I, I, if I had my way, I wouldn't have it at all. But, we'll probably see that in the next episode. Because, what are we on, about 17 minutes? Yeah, about that. So I'm going to go for a break here, but the next episode, let's play the Guild of Dungeoneering. I'm going to take the Apprentice out for a spin. I'll see you then.